Hello everybody, and welcome back to my show, World's Wild Weather, where we break down the wildest weather on the planet. This week we will be discussing the Bistro East, which was a 2018 cold wave which particularly affected Great Britain and Ireland. We will be covering the science behind it, the cause, the effect, and what it has done to some people, including some interviews. Let's get into this. Well, the basic science behind the beast from the east says that Storm Emma, which was a southerly storm, collided with easterly winds from Russia, creating the snowy conditions. But we can go a little bit deeper than that. There are three things that control the flow of air in Earth. Gravity, the sun, and something called the Coriolis effect. Gravity is simple, it just pulls things down. The sun warms air masses up, which means they rise. So gravity and the sun work opposite to each other, creating a cycle of air, which keeps air masses moving. The Coriolis effect dictates that anything travelling from the equator to the poles curves eastward, because the equator travels faster than the poles at the same time, which means that anything travelling from the equator is going faster than everything else when it moves from the equator outwards. This basically means that it will curve eastward, and anything travelling from the poles will curve the other way because it is travelling slower than everything else when it reaches the equator. These three things give us two things. Our air cycle, which keeps the air moving, and something called our jet stream. Jet streams are basically white long snakes of air which curve throughout our sky. They move from west to east and they are caused by the three things which I just discussed. A big temperature difference emphasises jet streams and makes them even worse, you could argue. There are two jet streams that we are familiar with, our subtropical jet stream and the polar jet stream. Our subtropical jet stream is what caused the easterly winds which came in from Russia and caused our heavy snow. These subtropical jet streams were caused by the polar jet stream and a complex cascade of events leading to sudden stratospheric warming. What is that? Well, that is when a mass of desperately cold air, which sits above the two polars, becomes about 50 degrees warmer than it should be. The cold air then sinks into the middle, a bit like a whirlpool, comes down in waves and disrupts our lovely westerly to easterly jet stream. This can make our jet stream twist and turn a bit like a snake, and in rare circumstances, even double back on itself. Now, our jet stream was flowing from west to east, and the winds came from east to west. So if the wave stream doubled back on itself and flow from east to west, it would have been easterly winds flowing in to Britain, to the west. This is what is nicknamed the beast from the east. And that is why we have our so snowy conditions. And what made this worse is these easterly winds flowing in, colliding with this storm called Storm Emma. If Storm Emma had just come on its own, we would have had very wet, drizzly conditions. And if the beast from the east came in on its own, we would have had the same conditions, but just less worse. And finally, the reasons that the easterly winds were able to travel in from Russia or the east to the UK is because between the Ural Mountains, which form the natural land border between Europe and Asia, there are no mountains or high land. And if there were, these would have taken the brunt of the snowfall. Welcome back to the studio, folks. Lovely thanks to my good friend Larry for conducting that brilliant scientific explanation. He's a geologist, and do check him out because he is simply superb at a geography. Next on our list, we have an interview from a man whose job has been severely affected by the beast from the east, and whose life may be severely affected if the snow conditions don't hold off anytime soon. Let's go check him out. This is George. He is the father of a family who lives in Wiltshire, and their lives have been affected by the beast from the east. Our first question to him is, how exactly have the beast from the east affected... Well, I'd say the main way that the beast from the east has affected me, I think it's affected my job more than anything else. Because I'm a professional driver, I usually drive 10 to 12 hours a day, and my money is the main source of income in my family. And in the current climate, with the roads all iced up, it simply is very hard to drive. Now, this isn't such a big problem for me, because I'm not a central driver, and 
it is such a big problem for other essential drivers, say A and E drivers or people like that, because if they don't get their patient to hospital or other valuable goods, something bad will happen because of it. I think another way that it's affected me and my family is it affects my children because in the current climate they can't go to school with the roads all iced up, same as I can't drive. And I think we've sort of lost that school isn't just a place for learning. Yes, it's very good for that, but it's a place to make friends, it's a place to keep friendships going and do all of those things. And of course, they can't really learn as well, because not everyone is a teacher. And being a teacher is very much harder than we all think. So those are the two main ways. It's affecting my job and it's affecting my children because they can't learn and they can't do all the many things that they do at school. Um, that's been George for his splendiferous answer. Right, our next question for you is, having listed all of these severely affected things that have happened to you, how are you coping with this? Is it really a big struggle? Or is it easier than most people would think? Well, it hasn't been too bad because we haven't been left to fend totally for ourselves. There has been some support given, but in some ways it has been quite a struggle. Because we haven't got any hot water, and in other cases, emergency services are struggling, and in extreme cases, some foolish drivers ignored the no driving rules and crashed, causing some deaths. So we haven't been too badly affected, and we're coping quite well. And that's all we've got time for tonight. We'll have another interview tomorrow if you tune in. Say a big thank you to our man here, George, for coming in and answering our questions. And that is all we've got time for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in to my show, World's Wildest Weather. We will be back tomorrow night at 7 o'clock for another episode of World's Wildest Weather. Thank you so much, until then, good night.